I'm Bob Duhamel, and today we are going to continue doing some practice problems of AC circuits with capacitors and inductors in series. So let's get on with it by going to another problem. I'm going to put all new values here. So let's start out this time with a bigger number here. How about one kilohertz? Let's make this 50 ohms and let's make our inductance 3.3 millihenries and let's make our capacitor 2.2 microfarads. So uh, these aren't too far different from the other ones, but we've put some real high frequency here. Let's see what happens to our calculations. Well, we still get some numbers and we'll just see what they are. So now we're working with a kilohertz instead of in the hundreds of hertz. So let's go on with the problem. First thing we need to do is calculate our inductive reactance. So once again, X sub L equals two pi FL, which in this case is going to be, of course, 6.28 times, what's our frequency? A kilohertz, 1000 for our frequency times 3.3 millihenries. So that's going to be 0 0.0033 henries. Let's calculate that out, 6.28 times 1,000 times 0 0.0033 equals, and we got 20.72 ohms for our inductive reactants. Now let's calculate our capacitive reactants. Once again, that's X sub C equals one over two pi FC, which equals one over 6.28 times 1,000 times 2.2 microfarads, so that's going to be 0 0.0000022. Let's calculate that out. 6.28 times 1,000 times 0 0.0000022 equals, I don't care about that number, I just take the reciprocal, and I got 72.37. So we have 20.72 ohms of inductive reactants, 72.37 ohms of capacitive reactants. I'll put a positive sign there and a negative sign there for convention. And let's draw our triangle. So we're going to start out with 50 ohms of resistance. And we're going to add 20.72 ohms of inductive reactants. So there's 50, that's about 20, which are about, yeah, about maybe that long. So that's going to be 20.72 ohms of inductive reactants. Now we need to subtract 72.37. So that's going to be, oh, that's going to be a lot. Let's see. It's going to be about ooh, down to the bottom of our board there, kind of ringing out, but it doesn't need to be perfect as long as the numbers come out perfect. So that's going to be negative 72.37. That's going to take us down to, what's that number going to be? 20.72 minus 72.37, 72.37 equals, and I got negative 51.65 for our total reactants. So let's just erase these just to clean it up. So we added 20.72 ohms of inductive reactants, subtracted 72.37 ohms of capacitive reactants, leaving us with 51.65 ohms of total reactants, and it's a negative number, so basically this is a capacitive circuit. So we need to find out the impedance, which is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So as before, the Pythagorean theorem, our total impedance equals the square root of r squared plus x squared. So here goes, 50 squared, store that away. And we take 51.65, 51.65, we square that, add that to the square of our resistance. We get a number that we take the square root of, and I got 71.8. So the length of that hypotenuse Probably not quite, that should be almost a 45 degree angle, shouldn't it? Yeah, 51, 50 ohms and 51.65 ohms. That should be a 45 degree angle. Just because we can, let's redraw that. 
That should be a, almost a nice, pretty 45 degree angle. What do you think? There we go, that close. So we have 50 ohms and 51.65 ohms and 71.8 ohms. With a phase angle, should be pretty close to 45, don't you think? So let's go ahead and calculate that phase angle. So we have an impedance of 71.8 ohms with a phase angle of, how do we do that? Once again, the arc tangent of our x over r. So here's x, there's r. So 51.65 divided by 50 equals a number we don't care about, but we take the arc tangent of that, and we got 45.92. Eh, 45.93 if we round it up. 45.9, well, I said it, so I'll write it there. 45.93 degrees. So let's write this in our proper polar notation. 71.8 ohms, hypotenuse of the triangle, with a phase angle of that angle there, which is 45.93. And because that's a negative number, because that's capacitive reactance left over after all the math, we have a negative phase angle. And again, in rectangular notation, 50 plus or minus j, minus j because it's capacitive, minus j, 51.65. So there is our impedance in polar notation and rectangular notation. Let's do one more and call it an exercise. So let's erase these numbers here. And what do we want to change? So let's just change this to 1.5 kilohertz. Not much of a change. Resistance will stay the same. These will change. This will double. That will cut in half. But we'll just redo the calculations because that's what we're doing. We're practicing the calculations. So one last time. So we need the inductive reactants. X sub L equals 2 pi FL, which equals 6.28 times what? 1,500 times, running out of board here, 0 .00, 0 0.0033. Just barely had room there. So 6.28 times 1500 times 0 0.0033 equals, and I got 31.08 uh, ohms of inductive reactants. Now capacitive reactants, X sub C equals 1 over 2 pi FC which equals 6.28, don't forget the one over, times 1500, our frequency, times 2.2 microfarads, so that's going to be 0 0.000022 000 farads. So here we go, 6.28 times 1500 times 0 0.000022 equals, don't care about that number, just going to take the reciprocal, and I got 48.25. So there we are at 1500 kilohertz. So let's draw our triangle. There's our resistance of 50 ohms. We're going to go up, oh, about there-ish, 31.08, and then we're going to subtract 48 0.25, so that's going to take us down to, yeah, there-ish, minus 48.25, so 31.08 minus 48.25 equals, gives us a total of negative 17.17. So our total reactance is going to be negative 17.17. So, so there's our resistance. We add our inductive reactants, subtract our capacitive reactants, end up with a negative number. There's our triangle. Calculate the hypotenuse. Here we go again. Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus X squared. So that's going to be 50 squared again. Store that away. 17.17 .17 squared, 17.17, .17, square that, 
add it to the square of the resistance. And I got a number that I take the square root of, and I got 52.87 ohms. I rounded that property. 52.87 ohms of impedance. What's the angle? Once again, we divide this number by that number. So divide x by r. So So our phase angle equals the arctangent of x over r, which will be 17.17 divided by 50. Take the arctangent of that, so 17.17 divided by 50 equals a number that I take the arctangent of, and I got 18.95. Once again, it's kind of a small angle to write in there. 18.95 degrees, and because it's capacitive, it's going to be a negative angle. So here we'll write that out as our proper impedance in polar notation. That will be 52.87. So the hypotenuse of the triangle, 52.87 ohms with a phase angle of 18.95 degrees. Capacitive, so it's negative. There's the impedance in polar notation. In rectangular notation, the resistance plus or minus j, minus j because it's capacitive, and that number, 17.17, and that is that. So that is what, um, four, five, they did about seven different problems, maybe eight, didn't count, but we went over that and did some practice. Hopefully you were following along, paused it when you needed to, and backed up if you needed to see it again. It went through it kind of quick, but it's pretty simple. I'll just do a quick review. We find our inductive reactants, X sub L equals 2 pi F L. Find our capacitive reactants, X sub C equals 1 over 2 pi F C. 2 pi, of course, is 6.28. Calculate those together. Then we subtract our capacitive reactants from our inductive reactants to find our total reactants, which gives us the side of our triangle. Our resistance is the base. And then the impedance will be the hypotenuse of that triangle, which we use the Pythagorean theorem. Our resistance squared plus our reactant squared, add those together, then take the square root, gives us the length of the hypotenuse, there that is. And then to calculate the phase angle, we take the reactants, divide that by the resistance, take the arc tangent of that result, and that gives us the angle. We write down our polar notation as our impedance, the hypotenuse of the triangle, with a phase angle, and it's a negative phase angle if it's capacitive. Our rectangular notation is the resistance plus or minus J and then the reactants. So there is this problem in both polar and rectangular notation and there we did some practice with this problem. So hopefully that made you familiar enough that if you decide to take a certification test or a licensing exam that you would be able to pass this problem if you came across it. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.